there! This is Anne Teagarden with episode 21 of the Unveiled podcast. This week I'm continuing in our Letting Go series. And one of the things I found I had to let go of was my plans and my ideals. I had this picture of what my idyllic family would look like. We would be laughing together and working together and playing together. Everyone would want to learn and serve joyfully and we would spend time together in the evenings. We would pray and worship together at home. It was all about family togetherness and peace. And I just knew if I did all the right things, I could make this vision happen. Well, as you can imagine, my reality didn't quite turn out that way. I realized I don't have control over everyone and every situation in my life. Other people don't conform to my plan. I just couldn't make this happen. But thankfully, over the years, I learned that God's plans are good and much better than mine and a whole lot more realistic. Honestly, when my kids were young, we did do a lot together because I homeschooled. I found that my kids didn't always get as enthusiastic about my ideas as I did, though. And I found that one of my children was quite strong-willed and didn't want to obey just because I said so. Imagine. Sometimes my kids fought with each other, and this did not fit into my idyllic, peaceful family picture. This wasn't supposed to happen in my home. I also pictured my husband spending time every evening with us, but when my kids were first born and toddlers, he was bivocational. So he did one job all day and another in the evenings, and he didn't have much free time to spend with us. But I was so sure that my plans were the right plans. And I often became frustrated, sad, discouraged, and even defeated. So I began to seek God and try to hear him more clearly. And one of the first things he showed me was that I needed to lay down some of my ideals. This was so hard for me. I was really attached to my ideals. It felt like laying down a part of who I was. And, and maybe it was. It took some time to adjust. But then the pressure was off to make this idyllic picture come to life. God showed me that my son was like a bear and I was like a tree that a bear sharpens its claws on. It needs sharp claws in order to survive. And the tree needs to stand tall and strong to help the bear. Unfortunately, the tree has scars in the end, but it's still standing tall and strong. And my role was to be the strong tree. Okay. Wait a minute, that was not my picture of motherhood at all. I had to embrace it though and ask the Lord for strength to stand tall. And it gave me a whole new perspective of motherhood. Just about the time I would adjust and see improvement in how I was feeling in my home life, God would ask me to lay down yet another ideal. I got stripped and stripped over several years. And I would think, no, not that one too. Isn't that a good one? But no, he was deconstructing me. I needed God's vision and plan, not mine. Proverbs 19, 21. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. That was my meditation and strength through those years. And it still is whenever God decides to upend me. It's changing our ideals and expectations of others for God's, it may not be easy, but his plans are so much better than ours that it's worth it. I found that every time I laid down my will in exchange for God's, my relationships with both my husband and my children improved. They no longer had to fit into my ideal plan. It allowed them more and more to be who they were created to be. You know, in the Bible, David desired to build a temple for God and that was a good desire. But God told him he was not the one to build the temple. His son would do it. Now, I suppose David could have chosen to go build it anyway so that he would get all the credit for having built the temple. But instead, he laid down his plans for God's plans. And it wasn't that his plan was bad. It just didn't line up with God's. I was reminded of the significance of following God over man while I was reading the book of Mark this week. In Mark chapter 8, P- 
Peter rebukes Jesus for saying that he has to die. And then Jesus turns and rebukes Peter saying, Get out of my sight, Satan, for your heart is not set on God's plans, but man's. You know, Peter was just giving advice as a close friend and someone who loved Jesus. He wanted what was best for Jesus and the disciples and the Jews, but he didn't know what was best. He was following his own heart, not God's will. But Jesus doesn't just say, oh, well, don't be selfish, Peter. He says, get out of my sight, Satan. He says that when our hearts are set on man's plans, sometimes we're following Satan. Wow, that gives a whole new depth of the seriousness of not following God's plans. Now, he wasn't calling Peter Satan. Don't make that mistake. But Jesus was talking directly to Satan. When we're following a path that's contrary to God's, it's usually because Satan is leading us in that direction, whether we realize it or not. And our friends, like Peter, may be very well-meaning and tell us what we want to hear, but they may be tempting us to do what we desire over what God desires. You know, Satan may be planning ideas through them that's going to divert us off of God's course, without them realizing it, of course. Okay, this may sound funny, but sometimes when we know we should do something different than what we really want to do, we go looking for friends who will validate our desires. For example, if a woman is like totally fed up with her husband's behavior and she just wants to get in his face and tell him off, she'll go to her friend that has that fiery personality and often gives her husband a piece of her mind because she knows that friend will encourage her in the direction she really wants to go. And she'll probably avoid that friend at church that will probably tell her and encourage her to forgive and go to God for wisdom. Have you ever noticed yourself not asking that certain friend for advice because you know what she will say? Follow God's ways. And that's not what you want to hear. So you go ask the friend that you think will be on your side. You can laugh, but I've done it. And I've seen others do it too. I need to go to God for direction and advice first. If my friend's advice lines up with God's, hey, that's wonderful. If not, I need to not be tempted by their advice. You know, I'm guessing that Jesus would rather have not gone to the cross and died a horribly painful death and left his disciples if he was just thinking about what was best for him in the short term. But he had God's perspective and he knew what had to be done. In November of 2018, when God first told me that I would be moving in May of 2020, I responded, Lord, let it be as you have said, I am your humble servant. No, I definitely did not say that. I actually responded, I don't want to move. Then I ignored him and I just didn't want to pay any attention because it didn't line up with what I wanted. Then I argued with him and I told myself I didn't really hear that from God. But later in that same week, sneaky God told my husband it was time to move. So at that point, I gave in. Now, while it was really hard to move and I totally miss my life and friends in California, I see all that God is doing in me, my husband, my daughter, my son, and my in-laws as a result of our obedience. And God has given me a major overhaul, and I think it took plucking me out of my comfort zone in order to do it. So I may not always like his plan, but I have learned it is always best. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says it well. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. It really all comes down to trusting God. It's, uh, it's kind of like the old saying, you, you can't see the forest for the trees. Well, sometimes we can't see how things could change for the better while we're looking through the lens of our own plans and ideals. But just ask God, because he loves to give you his perspective and a whole new vision for your life, your marriage, and your family. So what plans do you have for your marriage, husband, etc., that you need to let go of? How about ideals? Do you keep wishing your husband would be super romantic? Is that your ideal? 
or is that God's plan? I think the giving up ideals was the hardest thing for me because I felt my ideals were good. They were right. They were like a guiding star in my life. But anything that replaces God himself as my guiding star has to go. So this week, ask yourself, are there any expectations of myself or others that just don't seem to be getting fulfilled that are frustrating me? Do I need to let them go? Is there anything God is asking me to do that I've been avoiding? Ask God, are there any of my ideals, plans, or even expectations that I need to let go of in favor of your plan? If you're constantly frustrated by the same scenario over and over again, it could be that an ideal or plan needs to be surrendered in favor of God's design. Oh, how I long to see you soar in the freedom of not trying to make your plans and ideals become reality when they don't line up with God's. You will watch frustration disappear. I hope this episode has put some things in a new light. If so, please share it with a friend and subscribe if you haven't. If you could leave a review on YouTube or iTunes, that would be super helpful as well for others finding this. And always remember, you are loved. You are never alone. You are beautiful. and You can soar on eagle's wings. Go in peace.